Welcome, everyone. Can I just get a moment of silence for all you included, the loss of all the unloved and single versions of ourselves because you are now with your specific person and loved beyond measure and you will never, never be the same again, as well as can we get a moment of silence for everyone in my YouTube membership who, whose days are numbered as well, most of them don't even have a month, let alone a week left in their single state and they, they don't even know what's coming for them. Their specific person was stopping at nothing to be with them. And now as well, I want to go over a couple, a couple special mentions of extra moments of silence that I want to, I want to share with you today. First up, I'll put it right here. This, this individual, my email coaching who did the affirmations and their specific person came back two days later. They didn't even know what was coming. And now we mourn the loss of their single state. They will never be the same again. We will know, never know them, our friends, our best friends, the same way that they were. And if you were wondering, Kyle, what that sounds horrific, the complete loss of them being single. Now they're loved and abundant. What were those affirmations? So I can avoid it. I tell you, I will show you these affirmations at the promise that you will absolutely never use them because they will, they will bring your specific person to you. I'll put them up right here. Okay. Now what Absolutely, you should not say, definitely not say, is I am always appreciated. I am divine. I ask for what I want and I receive it. Everything is effortless for me. There is nothing I cannot do. I am in full acceptance of all the love this universe has to offer. I just just absolutely do not say that because this that you've seen the outcome of what happens when, when you do that. And I don't want you to end up like that. We, the, we'll have to mourn the loss of more single states and people because you will, without a doubt, be with your specific person. And next, I have, I have another. I have three, three people. We are single states we are mourning today. And I'll, I'll put the next one up. I'll read it for you. After a phone call coaching, they didn't even know what was coming. They said, hey, Kyle. So update, my SB came back to me in a matter of a day. Not even 20. They didn't have even 24 hours as their previous state. We talked everything out. Oh, my gosh. And we are finally back together. Not even 20. They don't even know. What they said, look, thank you so much. They don't even know what they're saying because they're just not. They will never be the same ever again. And now one, one last one, one huge moment of silence that we want to give. I'll put it up after a phone call session. They didn't even know again what was happening. It came out of nowhere. They said, Kyle, insert the name of the their SP who caused this love upon them that they didn't even know literally just texted me asking if I wanted to go over her place for drinks after work. I can't explain. Um, after we talked, I scripted. They cannot explain how, how terrible they didn't. They can't even explain the change in state. They don't even know what happened to them. And so make sure that whatever you do, again, do not, whatever you do, do not say those affirmations because you will be the next one. We will have to mourn on a video like this. Rest in peace to all of our, our lost single states, you included again with your specific person now in a loving and abundant relationship. Uh, but 
will never know you as the unloved or sad, depressed, anxious person ever again. That version of you is lost forever. So we, we, we pray now for, for, for them. All right. No, but seriously. So <laughs> I, I'm joking about this, but Neville got, we do have to die to our previous state in order to be reborn as the new. So I would always see it. And again, I threw Neville Goddard's name up, but he would always talk about that. he would talk about the loss of your previous state because you are in this new state. So you included, again, as you switch, as you change to this new version of you, you are going to see a complete change in everything that is happening because two states cannot exist at the same time. So I just want you to think about that. Can you be the, and I'll, I'll give more examples about that. I guess I can give them uh, both right now. Can you be both single and in a relationship at the same time? Yes or no? And you're gonna say, absolutely not, right? You have to be either one or the other. You can be in one and attempt or try to change that, but you are always ever in a singular state at any point in time. And I'll give you guys examples. And again, do absolutely do not use those affirmations. They will change your reality. But actually that was from uh, a coaching session. And I went back and I got those specific affirmations. So they worked for them. So hopefully if you guys utilize them, they'll work for you as well. But the, the example that Neville Goddard uses, if you guys are really into Neville Goddard and the way, the portrayal of how he uses the Bible as a metaphor, he uses Moses as an example to explain it. So I'll really quickly touch on that. Basically, Moses' grave was never found, right? And that's everything, as Neville Goddard would say, and I would think would be very helpful too as well, um, viewing it as a a representation of you and who you are, right? Because he also goes into, if you are single, so again, all those previous people we were mourning of who were single or now are with their specific person, think about them. They're now, they were single, now they're in this loving, awesome relationship. What happened, right? Like where, where did the single version of them go? And that's basically what what Neville Goddard talks about. Like you can't say where this person is buried because it's just a state that was exhibited and is no longer here. So again, can you be single and in a relationship at the same time? Can you be wealthy and poor at the same time? Can you be healthy and unhealthy at the same time? All of these, you're going to say they can't exist at the same time. So that's, that's the version. As you, as you switch from unhealthy to healthy version, people around you um, are going to ask, where'd the, where'd the healthy version of you go? And some people might actually, and that's kind of the next thing in my notes I wanted to talk about as well. When you have this change, because we need, we need a change. People are going to see you as changed and are going to notice it, right? Because that's what's happening in your external reality. You're going to see that change happen so, or you're going to feel the change. So people around you are going to express that as well. Now, sometimes it is met with a little bit of, you know, counteraction just because our previous or our 3D reality might be displaying a previous thought, a previous state, but that's, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing to worry about that. As you persist, um, you're going to see everything change and they'll see you as this new individual because then we are also going to believe ourselves to be this new individual. They may also possibly even ask, what happened to you, right? We all know that. When you have that state change, people are going to say that. You are going to be different, right? This two states, you being single, you being in a relationship are massively different, right? Those are massively different individuals of you and you are going to be doing different things saying, thinking, believing, all different things, like massively a change. You are entirely new. So when you have this internal state change, it ends up being not only a, a mental change, but also a physical change. And the way that I like to think of it is every single time you have an internal state change or let me, let me word it this way. Your external reality always changes in proportion to how you feel internally. 
okay? So if we are changing and feeling and doing these affirmations that I said earlier, showed earlier up there, if you're doing those and you're just thinking it and not seeing the physical changes around you, that means we're not having it impact who we are, okay? You want it to impact internally your internal state massively, okay? We need to be an entirely different individual. That's why I made the, the whole joke, not even a joke, right? We are mourning <laughs> the loss of all of our single, you, the, the loss of your single self. We are mourning the loss of that individual because we will never, as I said, never know that individual uh, ever. So you might be asking now, so along, because I know I included the affirmations, but how do we change into this state? What causes us to get there? And a lot of people ask, well, I've been manifesting for so long. Where, how come I'm not seeing exactly what I want in my reality? And there's actually a really simple uh, question you can ask yourself that I wrote down in my notes. And it's basically, and I, and I actually had someone ask themselves this today in a coaching call. So I was like, you know what? This fits perfectly for this um, little moment of silence that we're having for all of our lost single states. And so the trick is, and I've asked this multiple times in coaching sessions, but it did come up in one today. Do you feel different than you did a week ago, a month ago, or a year ago? That's the first thing, because again, the change you see externally is always proportionate to the amount of change that we have internally. So how do you, do you feel different than you did a week ago, a month ago, a year ago? Here's the thing though, and I'll, I'll ask you that right now, do you feel different? And mostly, I mean, all the time, life is changed. So you're gonna say, yeah, I work at a different job. I make a different salary. I live in a different place. I have different friends. But think of all those things that we just said. What we're specifically asking is, what changes have you felt in a relationship? How much have you felt in love and abundance in that way? Because your manifestation is about the state. So think of, think of that, right? How much have you changed in a relationship aspect? Because the, the state is... So we we might have changed from unwealthy to wealthy, from unhealthy to healthy. What about from unloved to love, to single to in a relationship? What about that? How much change have we actually experienced with that? And one time I had someone who was feeling a little frustrated and like, I don't get it, right? They kind of asked the same question. I've been manifesting so long. What's, what's going on? And I asked them that question and they, they said those like four, five, six, seven things of like, yeah, but I changed this, I changed that, I changed that. And I was like, okay, and I was listening, you know, being really patient, you know, because it's all about working and understanding it. And then I asked them that follow-up question of, well, what about a relationship? How different do you feel? And they were like, oh, <laughs> they had like this huge moment of realization of, oh my gosh, I've changed everything, but the feeling of being in a relationship. Like everything is different except that because we usually, if it feels really difficult or hard to change who we are or we feel it's difficult to change like the relationship aspect of ourselves, we'll try to change everything else with this illusion that we are changing the relationship version of ourselves. Does that make sense? It's like almost like if you know you have a project to do that's really important and you want to accomplish it, and you start doing every single other thing around you instead, uh, and you're basically avoiding and procrastinating on that thing. So take, take a look at your um, feelings and ask yourself again, the changes that you are experiencing or feel like you are or lack thereof. Do you feel a change in your reality? I'm gonna move this a little bit closer because I'm like leaning over there. So do you feel a massive change in who you are and your reality? And so next I want to work into what also might stop us from changing. Like I said, we might be attempting to, again, change everything else except being with our specific person or the feeling of being in a relationship. So what does that mean? And sometimes that can mean we are placing, because really a state change is as easily as we want to make it, right? States are always alive within us at any given time, right? Always every single moment of the day. You can just be whatever it is you want right here and right now. There's literally nothing stopping you. 
Remember, you're connected to your God state. Can God ever not be anything, right? Is there ever not a way for God to create and have or be something? No, there's never a restriction. So then there's no restriction for you, right? And you get that choice of living and exhibiting a state of love and abundance uh, rather than the opposite. But so I'm going to use something. So again, that's like your first question. If you want to, if we want to... <laughs> If you want to join the members or be here and we, we mourn your single state, then that's the question you want to ask uh, yourself as well as like the affirmations of do I feel different in regards to a relationship? And then it's going to give you the you're basically going to get a step by step instruction from yourself on then how to change and become the individual that's already in the end state. But let's say we're avoiding, we're avoiding changing our relationship, right? We're like, we're changing everything else. We feel like we are, we're improving self-concept, this and that, but we're like not, we're trying to avoid this struggle of struggle, quote unquote, of becoming, feeling single and worthy of a relationship, right? We're like switching that up. And so the example is always, and you guys have heard me say this before, but it's something called mixed neuro associations. So it's where we attribute both a positive and a negative value to something. So we get really confused and we get frustrated with this goal because we want to go towards it, but your subconscious stops you from getting to it. Think of when you touch a hot stove right? You guys are hot. So if I, if I touch you, it's like my hand automatically pulls away from that, right? Without even thinking about it. And I know that's like a, a physical example, but that's kind of what your mind's doing with things in your reality. That's the point of like, or the reason self-sabotage happens as well. And I'll give you a, an example. And then I'll give you examples of how this actually relates with manifesting a specific person. And the trick is I'll give you some like reasons and ways in order to switch it. But the really easy and quick example is going to be money. People have massive mixed neuro associations, associations when it comes to money, right? Because we think it's good, but also it's awesome. We love it. It helps us. We need it. But then also it's like the root of all evil simultaneously, right? Anybody think that or heard that before? So here are some of the potential pains that you would have with receiving money. And again, so I know this was a, a video about manifesting a specific person, but maybe it'll give you insight to manifesting $100 million this year. So some of the pains are, I have to work harder. I might get greedy. So this is in relation to if I make money, this might happen. I'll have to work harder. I have to be greedy. Other people will judge me. I'll have to pay more taxes. I might not be as spiritual. Uh, I fear being taken advantage of, or I might lose my drive. Okay. All those, maybe I do need to push my notepad back a little bit so I can see it better. So those are some of the pains that might be happening um, with that. But also, so think of that. And we all would kind of agree. We probably have all thought that before. But also there's pleasures with money, right? That's the whole point of how we're living. The car you drive, the place you're at. When you gift your um, friends, family, specific person, awesome, amazing gifts that make them so happy, that's from money as well. So freedom, or I mean, <laughs> I said it too soon. Money also gives us freedom, security. We can help our family, feeling of contributing or making a difference. And we have more of a control over our life. So again, we have this dual relationship where we are thinking, yes, money's good, but also root of all evil. So our mind gets very weird and frustrated. And then when we have a goal of manifesting money, that happens. But the same thing happens with everything, the same thing with our relationship. So let me give you some examples of some pain that might be felt in the relationship. And this, it's funny because I'm talking about this actually uh, yesterday or a couple days ago, I was working with someone on this idea. So here's because they're like, I'm very scared to be married, but their manifestation was to be married. So it's kind of like, again, this funny little in-between. So here are some of those um, pains when it comes to thinking about a relationship. Uh, fear of losing independence, heartbreak potentially, conflict and arguments, trust issues, them taking more of your time and energy, commitment, um, compromising personal goals because you feel like you have to sustain or be with them, um, jealousy, insecurity, all things 
that are not very good feeling. But then also remember, there's the whole other side of the coin when it comes to relationships. And tell me if any of those pains you're feeling right now, because you might be, we might be getting into something really, really good that we can switch. And then you can add your list of the, or add your name to the list of um, single states that we're mourning today. So some of the pleasures are, again, emotional support, comfort, physical intimacy, affection, companionship, friendship, shared goals and dreams, personal growth, security and stability, shared experiences and adventures, right? Like there's so much better things as well that are coming from this amazing feeling of being in a relationship as compared to the opposite, right? But they're technically I showed the same amount, but the, the trick is those negatives, I always talk about this. Your reality is never negative. It's only ever an illusion. Like the feeling or thought that you could ever be taken advantage of or the other ones taken advantage of have trust issues, jealousy, technically jealousy and in insecurity is totally tied to self-concept completely. So with that in mind, we just, it's all an illusion. You will not feel anxious and jealous in your end state because the way that we're manifesting it makes it not so. So you might be like, okay, Kyle, that's cool. All oh, we've identified it. And sometimes actually identifying it is the only thing that you need to do because once you identify it, you have taken the first step into changing it. But there's a couple ways in which we could do it. I already kind of touched on one that I'll, I'll restate again. But so first we need to reframe all the negatives. Why do we feel as if that is negative? Cause if you didn't notice some of those were the exact opposites of we're fearing something that actually is the reason that it's good. Cause like think of fear of losing independence, but then also emotional support and comfort. Like, yeah, that's the whole point of switching to it. And when we begin to reframe it, we'll see that we actually, that's okay, right? The loss of independence actually creates, all of these actually create more independence on your sort because you're actually, when you're in a relationship, you're open to all these new outcomes and um, things that are, um, all of these new outcomes and possibilities, adventures that you might not have been able to do before. So think of that end state and that's so much better so reframe it anything you feel is negative why is this actually working out in your favor write down whatever negatives that you had uh with a relationship if you did have any or even write down the ones that i mentioned write those down and write what's actually great about this what is actually perfect because again like jealousy and insecurity, you'd be like, yeah, okay, maybe I feel jealous. But actually the feeling of jealousy is the way to go around it, right? You could feel jealousy and be like, yeah, actually, I don't like this feeling. It doesn't make sense. It's confusing. I'm not going to feel that way anymore. So actually being with a specific person and getting into that state is actually going to help you grow because how else would you be able to get over this feeling of jealousy or whatever it is, commitment, whatever, if we aren't being put into that situation. So remember, it's kind of like that sort of thing is helping, but reframing it is basically viewing whatever we are seeing as a negative, asking what's great about this, and then writing or finding out what exactly is so fantastic about that. So that's the, the first one. The second one is going to be self-concept. And this is like the easiest one, but not really self-concept, more of something called self-efficacy. And tell me if you guys want me to make another video on that, because I did make a video of self-efficacy in the past uh, that I could, um, I don't remember exactly, it was like a really long time ago, but I can remake it. But self-concept, the difference, because you're probably like, Kyle, we... Quit talking about it. We don't even know what it means. So self-concept is your worth. I feel worthy. Self-efficacy is you feel the power and confidence to do a specific task. So what that means is if you go to work, and again, let me know if you guys want me to make a full video on this. If you go to work and you're sad, can you still do your job? And you'd say, well, yeah, I can, right? But technically... According to how some people think of law of assumption, that shouldn't work at all, right? But the trick is your feelings, your worries, anxieties, your emotions have nothing to do with your beliefs. You believe you're good at your job and you know you are, so being sad doesn't affect it at all. Feeling unworthy doesn't affect your 
job at all, literally at all, right? You can do it perfectly fine. That's self-efficacy. And so when we're thinking about, and again, let me know if you guys want me to go into like more detail, but think of um, earlier, if you have the power or the self-efficacy of knowing I can be in this relationship, that's kind of the change of moving into the end state. Because I talked about people thinking about changing and they're like, oh, I've changed everything except being with my specific person, right? Uh, or the feeling, change the feeling of relationship. But that's what we want to focus on, self efficacy. And again, let me know if you guys want uh, another video on this. Uh, I think it's a really, really cool idea. I'd love to make another video because every time I remake a video, I always include like more and more stuff to it. So even if you've seen my self-efficacy video, I can add a whole bunch of extra stuff to it. And the third one, I was going to say the last one, but it's not the last one, is just focusing on growth, right? If we are viewing something as mixed neuro, as good and bad, it just means we're not understanding and focusing on the positive and the good in it. Like, don't you think you would go through all of that to be married? Like, to be happy, loving in this perfect relationship with your specific person? I would imagine if you focused and seen in your mind's eye that outcome, there's nothing you wouldn't push through in order to get there. So it's kind of focusing on growth, focusing on the overwhelming happiness is what I wrote, uh, regardless of other feelings. You will have this awesome, amazing, abundant relationship with your specific person. So think about that. Focus on that. Don't focus on what's going wrong. Focus on what's going right. Because again, perfection isn't about adding everything. It's about nothing left to take away. So it's kind of like focusing and only doing exactly what you want, getting rid of the rest, that sort of thing. And then the last one, the fourth one, is actually something called a pre-mortem exercise. And this is something I haven't really made a video about, but let me know if you guys want to. So pre-mortem exercise, and again, it almost seems like the opposite of law of assumption, but it calms your fears. It's something people do and anytime you have a fear, if you're fearing the worst with your manifestation, it's on your mind all the day, all every, all the time of day, every single moment of the day, that's a better phrase. Every single moment of every single day, every single week, every single month, you could actually be one exercise away from eliminating that. And that's called the pre-mortem exercise. And that's basically, and again, it's going to calm your fears. It's going to sound paradoxical, but it actually puts you into the state more than not. So the trick is, what you want to do is think about that worst case scenario and ask, okay, this happened, now what? Okay? And you're going to realize whatever it is you're fearing isn't the end. Like, think of if you're fearing and you can't stop, you're having nightmares every moment of the day about your SP being with a third party. That could be something, and maybe you're going through it right now. Maybe you're thinking every moment of the day, it's something you're fearing, worrying about. If you thought, okay, SP isn't with a third party. So what? That's what I'm going to say to you in a, in a phone call. I'm going to say, okay, so what? You can still manifest. Like it's not, nothing stopping you. Like, so you would say nobody's ever been in a relationship before and still manifested their specific person. You'd be like, well, no, that happens all the time. So it's like, then why do you feel the third party is like the end all be all, right? Everything in your reality is a reflection of you. And so the third party doesn't even want to be there anyway. It's actually the fear and the lack of this pre-mortem exercise that's actually causing it. But let me know if you guys want me to go in further detail of this exercise. Again, it seems like the opposite, but it'll calm all of your feel fears and actually put you into the end state more than you've ever been before. So those are the four ways. And um, let me know if you had any questions on them. All right, and I just want to do one, one last time a rest in peace to all, all of our lost single, <laughs> single states of our individuals who are in a relationship, in their perfect loving relationship, and I actually want to really mourn the loss again of the single states, the feeling of being unloved, of all of my YouTube members who are working together again with me again on Sunday tomorrow. We're going to be meeting again, and again, most of them have less than a month of being in this loving relationship before Valentine's Day. It's only a matter of time. Basically set in stone, most of them only have a week or a couple days before they'll be with their specific person. But I just want to put everyone's name up on the screen and mourn <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Type RIP in the chat 
for all of their single states. And if you do want to join in and um, mourn the loss of your own single state, um, you can become a member. I'm going live tomorrow, Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, click the link in the description, but at your own risk, because just again, whatever you do, do not say those affirmations at the beginning, because I don't know if I can handle another loss of my my friend's single state. So it was they were so comfortable feeling unloved, and now all of the YouTube members are going to be in loving relationships. And guys, think about it. I don't even do. I even have the schedule. I'm manifesting 10,000 success stories. Do I even have the schedule to go to all of your weddings? I mean, come on, you guys. You you guys, come on. Just think think of think about it for a moment. Do I even have time to attend all of your beautiful, magnificent weddings and enjoy the loving relationship of you and your specific person? Like just think about it, guys. It makes no sense, right? So, rest in peace to all of the people of the single people, ourselves, you included, RIP to your single state because we, you will never be the same again. So again, it's the biggest RIP is going to be on Valentine's Day when you guys are in totally, it's going to be like you're totally new person entirely, completely. Um, So our RIP to that. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching today. Um, Again, if you had any questions, um, put them in the comment section below. Uh, I thought this was really funny. Go head over to kyleagustcoaching.com too if you wanted to send me a personal message or you wanted to start um, the, as much as I hate it, start the process of you mourning the loss of your single state. Um, again, you can reach out to me. Any questions, comments, concerns, everybody type RIP to their um, previous single state in the comments, especially say RIP to all the members that were on the screen um, that have joined. Don't even know what they've gotten themselves into. Um, Hopefully you guys like the video. Leave a thumbs up too. If you are the next person, we're going to be mourning of their single state because you are going to be like a butterfly out of a cocoon, totally new, totally divine. You're stepping into your God or goddess energy, king or queen energy, and you never be the same again. Again, thank you so much for stopping by today and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow in the morning and then I'll see you guys, all my my members live at 1 p.m. Eastern time, okay? I'll see you.